Hi, I'm Erica. You may recognize me from some of my other YouTube videos on the GMAT. Now these days I mostly spend my time working on SAT and ACT here with Magoosh, but today I've got a great GMAT tip on probability, permutations, and combinations that'll help all of you who are aiming for a 700 plus GMAT score. So probability, permutations, and combinations are gonna show up at about the same frequency no matter what level you're performing at on the test. What changes with your difficulty level is the complexity of those questions. Now, oftentimes with these more complex problems, there are so many moving pieces, so many things to separately solve for, that solving for all of them and then combining them together to get the total of what you want is unrealistic in the scope of two minutes. So what do you do? So on a problem where you're finding it's particularly complex to solve directly for what you want, instead consider solving for what you don't want and subtracting it from the total. Now again, this tip applies to probability, permutations, and combinations, but let's start by discussing how it applies to probability. Not only does this appear more frequently in probability questions, there's also a couple of things that make it a little bit easier in probability questions. So the first thing that we should know about probability questions is that the total probability is always one or 100%. So we don't need to solve for that separately. That is something we already know. And then the second part here is that there is often a clue in the question, and that's the phrase, at least. If we see the words at least in a probability question, that is a huge hint that we should be using this trick. So let's take a look at some example questions to explore this. So this question asks us to find the probability that at least one multiple of three is rolled. Now let's talk about what at least one means. Well, at least one could mean exactly one. So we could roll a multiple of three on our first roll, or we could roll it on our second roll, or we could roll it on our third roll, or on our fourth roll. And if we were to add up the probabilities of each of those cases, we would get the total probability that we roll exactly one multiple of three. But that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for at least one, which means that we could also roll exactly two multiples of three, which again can happen in any order, first and second, first and third, first and fourth, and so on. But then we can also roll exactly three multiples of three, again, in any order, or we could roll all four multiples of three. Now, if we wanted to find each of those cases, find the probability for each one and add them up, that would work for this problem but it takes a long time and it's really error prone. Let's instead try our trick. Let's take our total probability of one and subtract the probability of what we don't want. Well, what don't we want? We want at least one multiple of three, so the only thing we don't want is rolling no multiples of three. Now that's a significantly easier probability to find. So on our first roll, we can roll a one, a two, a four, or a five. So that's four options out of six, or a two thirds probability of not rolling a three. Now on our second roll, we have the exact same options, a one, a two, a four, or a five out of six options. So that's four out of six, or again, two thirds. Same thing for our third roll, and same thing for our fourth roll. Now since we need all four of these, we multiply them together to get 16 over 81. Now be extremely careful because that's an answer choice. Note that if you are using this strategy of solving for what you don't want and subtracting from the total, they will very frequently put what you don't want as an answer choice. So we have to remember that to turn it into what we do want, we need to subtract from that total or subtract from one. Now in this case, one minus 16 over 81 gives us 65 over 81 or answer choice D. Let's try one more example probability question before we move on to permutations and combinations. All right, so this problem gives us a bag of marbles and wants us to find the probability that a blue marble is taken from the bag at least 
once. So once again, we have that clue with at least. Now, if we didn't catch that, we would see in the answer choices that we also have a one minus in most of the answer choices. So we've got an abundance of clues that we want to use our strategy of taking the total probability one and subtracting the probability of what we don't want. Now, if we didn't notice this, we might get hung up on trying to find the probability of one blue marble or two blue marbles or three blue marbles or four blue marbles and then deal with all the different orders that come from it. But because we've seen these clues, we're going to jump straight to our strategy of our total probability one minus the probability of what we don't want. Well, what don't we want? Well, if we want at least one blue marble, the only thing that doesn't work is no blue marbles. Now, once again, this is a much easier probability to find. So we have eight picks out of the bag. All right, now for the first pick, we want not a blue. Don't care if it's a red, don't care if it's a green, that's irrelevant to this problem. But we have 10 non-blue marbles out of 15 total marbles, or a two out of three probability. All right, now, Notice here that the marble is replaced between each draw. So we have with replacement, which means that for this second pick, we are still going to have 15 marbles and still 10 of them are going to be non-blue. So we're gonna have the same probability on the second pick of two thirds. And we're gonna have that same two thirds probability for each of the eight picks. Now, this could be pretty complicated math, but we're going to go ahead and again take the cue from our answer choices, which has a bunch of exponents, right? So because this has a bunch of exponents, we're going to leave this in exponential form. Since there are eight picks and each pick is two thirds probability, we have two thirds to the eight. Now we're lucky here. That's not an answer choice few because we have to remember to subtract from one to go from what we don't want to what we do want. So one minus two thirds to the eighth is answer choice C. So this is obviously a powerful tool for probability. And if you stopped the video right here, you would have learned something very valuable. But what makes this strategy so cool is that it also has amazing applications for permutations and combinations questions where there are difficult restrictions. Let's take a look at a permutations question to illustrate. So this problem presents us with a permutation where we have a gift that is wrapped in some kind of paper that is tied with some kind of ribbon and affixed with some kind of bow. Now all of these are different. Blue paper is different than a blue ribbon is different than a blue Bow, so this is again a permutation. Now we know that we have five different colors of wrapping paper, red, green, blue, purple, or gold, four different colors of ribbon, red, blue, gold, or silver, and four different colors of bow, blue, red, purple, or gold. Now, if the question wrapped up here by asking how many different possible selections Li Jing could make for wrapping a particular present, we would use the fundamental counting principle to multiply these up and get that we have 80 total options for wrapping this present. But there is an extra sentence in here where it says the paper, ribbon, and bow cannot all be the same color. So there is a restriction. Now, at this point, we could try to find all of the different permutations where all of them are different or where the paper and the ribbon are the same or where the paper and the bow are the same or where the ribbon and the bow are the same. And we could add all of those up and that would work. But what we might notice here is that there is only one thing that's not allowed, which is that they're all the same color. So why don't we use our rule again? We'll take our total number of options for wrapping our package or our present and then subtract the number of options where they're all the same color. All right, now we already have our total. There are 80 different ways. So let's go ahead and figure out how many ways we can wrap this present where all of the wrapping items are the same. Well, we know that we could have red wrapping paper, a red ribbon, and a red bow. We can have blue wrapping paper, a blue ribbon, and a blue bow. Or we can have gold wrapping paper, 
gold ribbon and a gold bow. And that's it. There are only three options for them all being the same. All red, all blue, or all gold. So we can take our total of 80, subtract our three options where they're all the same color to get our correct answer of 77 where they are not all the same. All right, this last question is a combinations question and it is very difficult, probably more difficult than anything you'd see on the actual test, but it really illustrates the power of this strategy. So this question asks us to find a combination of three out of 15 dots that do not form an equilateral triangle. So kind of a giveaway that we have a combination here and we have a pretty obvious restriction, not an equilateral triangle. So we could waste a bunch of time here trying to draw a bunch of non-equilateral triangles, but we should notice our answer choices are huge. So that's not gonna get us very far. We could try to think about all the different types of triangles that aren't equilateral, but again, that's gonna be kind of complicated when we should notice that there is a very specific restriction. It's not equilateral. So what we can do instead is use our trick. Find our total combinations of three that make a triangle and subtract the number of triangles that are equilateral. All right, so let's start with our total. We have 15 dots, we're choosing three, so that's a 15 choose three combination. So that's gonna be 15 factorial over three factorial times 15 minus three factorial or 12 factorial. All right, pulling 12 factorial out of 15 factorial, we get 15 times 14 times 13 over three times two times one. All right, the one doesn't really mean anything. Pull the three out of the 15 to get five, the two out of the 14 to get seven. So we've got five times seven times 13. There are several different ways to approach that, but that's not what this video is about. So I'm gonna tell you that this is for 55. All right, now at this point, this is our total. We still need to subtract the number of equilateral triangles. So the combinations that give us an equilateral triangle. So we know that our answer is going to be smaller than 455, which means C, D, and E don't make any sense. Now, if we were to guess blindly from here, we would have a 50% chance of getting this question right. But before we do that, and before we start drawing triangles, let's think about this logically. Do we think that there are going to be more equilateral triangles? So triangles where all three sides are exactly the same length or more triangles where the sides can be any length as long as they're not all the same. Seems likely that it's gonna be the second, right? The equilateral triangle is a very specific type of triangle so there's likely to be fewer of them. Now let's take a look at our answer choices in light of that. If our answer was A, 160, that would mean there were about 300 equilateral triangles to 160 non-equilateral triangles. That doesn't fit our expectation at all. On the other hand, if we were to pick B, 450, that would mean there were only five equilateral triangles compared to significantly more 450 non-equilateral triangles. That fits our expectation significantly better. So we can go ahead and pick B and roll out A. Now, if you want to prove this to yourself, you can draw the triangles. And if you want to see that done, that is in a blog article that I've gone ahead and linked in the description. But I would not do that on test day. Here, we can get to the answer by using our trick and a little bit of logic. And that's a 700 plus GMAT probability permutations and combination strategy. Instead of solving for what you want, consider solving for what you don't want and subtracting from the total. To stay updated with all of our upcoming videos, like this video and hit the subscribe button. And if you have questions on this video or suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and talk to you soon.